And we're back here live in the Cube at Hadoop Summit in uh, San Jose. If you want to say Santa Clara, San Jose. Uh, <laughs> Last year's, yeah. Yes, I'm here with my uh, co host, Avi Meta. Thank you. Just got, a, just got my promotion to a co host. Doing a bang up job. Thank you, I appreciate it. Uh, and we're joined now by uh, Andre Dragomir from Adobe. Thanks uh, for having me. Thanks for coming on, really appreciate Thank it. Thank you. Uh, you know, one of the big things we're trying to do here uh, on theCUBE is bring in some practitioners, some big data practitioners, to really talk about kind of working in the trenches and how they're really making use and uh, deriving value from big data. So why don't you tell the audience a little bit about yourself and then maybe we're going to go into how Adobe is uh, kind of uh, working yeah, sure. in the big data space. Yeah, sure, definitely. So uh, I'm, a, I'm a, as you say, a practitioner, a software engineer. Uh, we've been working with, uh, me and my team, we've been working with these technologies, Hadoop, PageBase, and France since uh, 2008, actually, so we're really early uh, early yeah, wow. uh, practitioners with this stuff. Um, we've been running it in production since uh, late 2009, so again, we're, uh, we're pretty, pretty, uh, pretty, yeah. pretty advanced for, uh, for that time. Uh, and uh, what can I tell you? We've uh, we've had a lot of experience. Me personally, working with other distributed system, uh, mm -hmm. building some internal stuff at Adobe, and then we looked at this uh, these open source projects, yeah. and it made a lot of sense to uh, to start looking at them and using them. And basically, we we placed a big bet on Hadoop and HBase, and it's starting to to really okay. pay off. Mm -hmm. What what drove it for for a technology company to have picked this thing? I'm sure you have incredibly smart developers. Your products are are incredible. What drove this move to going open source and being such an early adopter? What was the driving factor? Well, I guess I guess it was uh, more uh, like a necessity is the mother of all, uh, you <laughs> know. Uh, basically, basically, you know, Adobe was was traditionally uh, they they had a lot of experience and some hugely smart people working with image technologies, video technologies, right. but you know, nobody, us included, uh, we we didn't have much idea about analytics, big data, distributed systems. So, so in that sense, it made a lot of sense because in the beginning, what, what we were on about was earlier was fast prototyping. Mm -hmm. So we did a whole bunch of prototyping prototypes uh, for a whole bunch of clients and products for uh, video analytics, uh, we did machine learning. Uh, uh, we, we, did, uh, we did a project that was really interesting of uh, analyzing flash content on the internet so we can you know, detect stuff like uh, uh, flash player uh, crashes and oh. uh, what functions are people using. Proactively. Proactively, okay. yeah. So we 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 uh, we knew there was a there uh, there was a use case. It's like we were growing into this technology while the company was growing into this need. And very interesting. So uh, it was uh, it was uh, kind of a serendipity. What was uh <laughs> and now uh, Adobe is moving more and more towards services. What with the launch of CS6 and the subscription model and the creative cloud. Right. Mm -hmm. And uh, we're going to be seeing it much more and more user-generated content, user-generated data, like uh, somebody mentioned in a, in a presentation, observational data. Right. Mm -hmm. So we need to have the tools on hand to be able to derive uh, meaning and business value from this data. Mm, very interesting. Uh, I, we spoke recently with uh, Peter uh, Goldmacher, who's a Wall Street analyst at Cowan, and he mentioned a few, his thesis was that you're going to see uh, the majority of uh, value generated for, around big data from practitioners. Mm -hmm. And he specifically pointed to Adobe, so I was particularly excited to, to talk to you today. So why don't we t t dive into a little bit about, um, you know, s as you kind of go into that services business a little bit more, the role of big data, and how you're turning that to your advantage to actually you know, create value for your customers and actually value for, for Adobe. Yeah, so I guess I guess the first thing that uh, that uh, that we're looking at is uh, you know uh, helping uh, helping ma matching basically uh, there's there's a couple of things here. The first of is uh, what do we need to do in our software offerings to to make it. Uh, uh, to make it more useful for Relevant. users. Mm -hmm. uh, one of the best way of doing it is actually observing what users are doing with the product, mm. right? Uh, that's one thing. On the other hand, it's something totally unrelated, like uh, we, we are creating new software products, which that's, that's their uh, um, reason to, to be, to, to analyze data and uh, create value for customers. And again, I'm referring here to the digital marketing initiatives right. and mm -hmm. what we're doing with uh, big data in those spaces. And finally, there's uh, again, there's a lot of stuff that's related to to, to internal metrics, and uh, you know the the question is uh, uh, quality of service data. How right. how well does a product work for my users? Mm -hmm. And that's a a huge amount of data that uh, you know traditionally and in most companies today still 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 stays in its raw form because mm -hmm. there aren't the tools don't exist to to query it, mm -hmm. basically process it, query it, and uh, get meaning from it. So slightly change the topic, I mean, making it more around, is, th is this as much, it's where you said, necessity is the mother of invention. 
Yeah. Is it as much the fact that you're moving to a as a services model, which seems interesting and logical. Mm. You hear that a lot, uh, Jeff, right? Absolutely. A, lot, a lot of people coming here. Seems like this collision between the cloud and big data is almost forcing uh, both for the customers and on B2B side, but also for companies and as a service model. What about something a little bit more separate on the technical side? This whole HTML5 versus Adobe's core technologies and some of your larger customers, the larger users saying, well HTML5 is going to be the way. I mean, how do you guys view this shift in technology? We're talking about the analytics side, but what about shift in technology on, as new technological waves come? With HTML5, I can make the same logical argument around Hadoop, open sourcing a key part of the stack. Proprietary technologies have to, have to look, at, look in and ask them a tough question. Mm -hmm. It's very reassuring to see you guys picking up Hadoop on the analytics side. What about on the core business? How does HTML5 change your perspectives on proprietary technologies? Well, again, that's not, that's not my area of competence, yeah. but if you're looking at uh, what we're doing uh, right now in the space, we were actually, we've, uh, we're becoming a very short time, and that's related strictly to the, to the HTML5 questions. Right. We're actually becoming really big players in the WebKit ecosystem. Ah, okay. So uh, we actually have uh, have a team in Romania. We have uh, WebKit committers. We have uh, we've implemented, uh, and 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 the, the the way it you know it integrates with our products is basically we have a lot of knowledge with stuff related to video, audio, mm -hmm. uh, image, uh, topo topography. Right. Uh, one of the things that we did, and again this is unrelated to, to big data, just this. We, we implement the stuff that does uh, CSS regions, basically allowing you uh, with HTML5 and uh, open web technology to have uh, really, really advanced layouting techniques huh. for, for web pages. Right. So we're, we're embracing that with, uh, and, and the reason is why, and again, this is, I guess it's, you know, it's, it's pretty much common sense. Uh, Everybody benefits, right? No, we I benefit because we, and uh, we're, we're... And it's almost like you're, you're making the distinction between the IP, the intellectual property, is not the core technology, the software. It's yeah. decoupling it. It's a, it's a very interesting point on the fact that it's your knowledge, it's your semantic knowledge of processing images. Exactly. And videos, mm -hmm. and documents. That is probably more important than the, the, the technology that you've written to it. Exactly. And if you can exactly. apply that to HTML5, or any new technologies, open source or not, you can retain your advantage. Is, is, that, is that the concept? I, I think so. Interesting. I think so, yeah. Mm -hmm. So, you know, back to uh, this conference here. I mean, what are you seeing here in terms of the, the vibe and in terms of the, uh, the, the attendees here? Is it, is it heavily on the technology and the developer side? Um, and, and kind of, you know, you're an early adopter. You've been using this for a while. Are you seeing a lot of your uh, brethren early adopters? Or are you seeing some new faces? And uh, what's, I'm, your, what's I'm, your take? I'm seeing a lot of new faces. And uh, I think it's uh, like uh, the, the free lunch is over, so to speak. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, th this is good. There's I mean, nothing like a free lunch, mm -hmm. huh? Yeah, right, <laughs> right. Uh, up to a point, Hadoop was this uh, technology where uh, you know it, you had to, to to invest a lot of in in creating your own team that could uh, install it, operate it, and mm -hmm. develop on it. Correct. Uh, a lot of these functions now are being replaced by either vendor solutions or they're being rolled up into the core product itself. Mm -hmm. And for me, this is something that's uh, really really awesome to see because uh, typically. Uh, you know that's 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 the way that you want to bring an open source project forward, Absolutely. right? Uh, take care of the uh, the underlying infrastructure so right. you can concentrate on creating uh, business value. So, with so it. how do you see the, the 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 larger players who have now come and embraced the HDFS ecosystem in the last 12 months? IBM, EMC, HP, VMware um, mm -hmm. versus Horton Wilson and Cloudera. I mean, what is your perspective? Have you have you used a lot of them? What do you think of uh, what each of them offers? Mm -hmm. So we 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 d we did look at the at some commercial technologies right. that's building ar around this ecosystem. Uh, we've evaluated some of them. Uh, well, it I, th I think it depends. I can't speak for the motivations of each party, but right. what 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 I want to say is that you know competition mm -hmm. is is a, is a really really fine way of driving stuff forward, right? I agree. Mm -hmm. So you know let let a thousand flowers bloom mm -hmm. and let uh, you know let let users have choices. And uh, let let uh, enterprises invest more in Hadoop and the existing ecosystem. So related to the vendors, that's that's pretty much my idea. What was really interesting coming, and this was the first time at this year's Hadoop Summit, was seeing a lot of open source projects in the Hadoop ecosystem, but ch which are not uh, tightly uh, tightly related to the core. So we uh -huh. see presentations on well, HBase is now 
you know, part pretty, of the core. Pretty, right. pretty, pretty part of the core. But we've seen presentations on uh, Zookeeper, on Storm, and all mm -hmm. kind of technologies that really, really complement Hadoop. Completely agree. And moving forward, I think that's, I mean, that's exciting. Uh, that, that's not, it's you know, just empty talk. That's the Hadoop ecosystem. I, no, mm -hmm. It's a big one. It's a big one. Uh, I mean exactly. Uh, yeah. We at uh, uh, Jeff does. I do. We, 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 I call it the HDFS ecosystem. It's actually not about Hadoop anymore. Right? It's not just not produce an HDFS. Yeah. And the HDFS ecosystem is very vibrant. We see it with all these conversations, mm -hmm. all the projects. Storm is, there was, a, there was a standing room only crowd for Nathan Braz exactly. for Storm today morning, which is very good to see. There's interest on real time and Hadoop. We've got, we get that question often. Mm -hmm. And I agree with you. This, this is a very vibrant ecosystem. It almost compels you to, to I mean, Jeff, what do you say, right? That open source is, is the secret sauce. Exactly. And it's, but it's open, right? <laughs> <laughs> Right, the absolutely. secret is open. The emperor has clothes or not, we know it. We know exactly <laughs> what it is. Yeah, absolutely. But you know, we're also seeing, if you look at some of the vendors here, I mean, we're seeing there's some of the more traditional data management vendors that are now trying to uh, kind of position themselves in the big data world. That's a good point. Um, you know, so versus some of the you know, Hadoop focused upstarts I mean, yeah. in the open source world. And it's really interesting to see how they're playing You're together. Right. And you know, are they playing together, Jeff? Uh, some are, some okay. are. You're seeing some some proprietary vendors working with some of the distribution distribution vendors, right. for instance. That's good point. That's you know, that's we're seeing some of that. Um, you know, but we I think we coined the term uh, big data washing on this on this uh, <laughs> on the cube a while back. You know, not everything is uh, not everyone who kind of slaps that term under their product under the box is really <laughs> big data. So, uh, you know, it, it's definitely a, still a, an evolving uh, ecosystem right now. Definitely, definitely. I think I think for also from what I'm seeing. More most vendors are also testing the waters, right? And you know, implementing some stuff. There's uh, again, there there are a lot of vendors which are uh, selling stuff that helps Hadoop be easier to use. I think that's I uh, agree. that's mm -hmm. still uh, that's still like a, a motif that comes up in in uh, in a lot of what the yeah, vendors right. are doing. No, right, absolutely. I mean, one of the keys of being being an enterprise-ready platform is right. to, it mm -hmm. has to be able, you know, easy, easy to use. use. So to abstract away some of the complexity with some of these drag and drop tools and GUI. Uh, you know, graphical user interfaces and things like that, so you don't have to write the raw code. Exactly. Um, so yeah, so and I think that's one way that we're seeing the more traditional uh, proprietary type vendors. That's right. That's what kind of what they're trying to do is apply oh their their, their data integration methods. Right. You know, to Hadoop and we'll bring our um, kind of our user interface to that. Yeah, I agree. Um, and and I think that's important. I mean, that's a that's one way. Uh, you know, we're going to reach that level of uh, adoption is you to make the tools easy to what use. What's exciting for me, Jeff, is to see. I mean, like Adobe, you know, I, I, you've been, I've been a practitioner, I'm now a, a developer, a vendor, uh, trying to change the world with uh, mm -hmm. my little uh, initiative. Mm -hmm. But it's very exciting to see uh, companies like Adobe, right, who, who I would not classify. It's almost like what you described to us is the evolution of your company, fundamentally mm -hmm. built around big data. Mm -hmm. uh, people mm -hmm. may not think of it that way, but you are a big data company yourself. Well, uh, I wouldn't know if I could go so far, but there, there's, there, I mean, there it seems to be an emergent pattern right, in what, right. what we're mm -hmm. doing right but now. But you can use, the one I was trying to make was, you actually are leveraging the same tools that a Google has leveraged for search and Facebook for social, and banks can leverage on my platform for financial data, exactly. to actually mm -hmm. uh, look at building an as a service model for Adobe, which is very, very exciting to see, because Jeff, in my mind, that opens up a whole new wor world of existing technology companies can redo their own infrastructures mm -hmm. and their own business models around analytics and predictive mm -hmm. work, as, mm -hmm. as you mentioned. Well, it's very exciting. It's very exciting, but you know, it is also scary, I think, to some <laughs> businesses. <It's laughs> changed my whole business model. Uh, yeah. you know, it's like, well, we, that we spent years and years building. So, uh, you know, there are, but it's going to be those companies that, that they can do it. jump in early yeah. and, and really uh, are committed to it, as Adobe yeah. is, that are, you're going to see flourishing. Again, back to, to, to our friend uh, Peter Goldmacher at uh, Cowan, he said when yeah. back in the you know, late 80s, early 90s, if you're trying to figure, you know, pick which vendor was going to be the ERP vendor, you never would have bet on SAP. But if you would bet <laughs> on, uh, that's but if you would bet on the right. companies that were using Maybe. ERP, those companies, you know, their value exploded. So the practitioners, that's really where a lot of the value is. I agree. You know, it is, it's hard, you know, we are here on theCUBE, we love to try to pick, you know, who's going to win the Hadoop <laughs> uh, distribution game of the war, or how, whatever you want to call yeah, it. But it's and that's important, but really yeah. it's the practitioners that are developing either new lines of business or completely new business completely models agree. or startups exactly. building off so this platform where the value and is. And, and another thing is that we try to, you know, we, we try to look at everything what's happening, but again, we're trying to be pragmatic. Uh, we're, we're building some of this stuff on our own right now. Right. Mm -hmm. if, if there's a solution as a service you from somebody else and if it makes sense, you know, from, from all standpoints, technology, performance, price, you're then why not? We're, 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 we're open to any kind mm -hmm. of suggestions. Right. The, the most important thing Again, is being a practitioner and actually getting inside the 
the mind of the big data ecosystem. Mm -hmm. Completely agree. Yeah, in terms of, so what advice would you have to you know, IT pros out there, they, they know a bit about, uh, you know, maybe they're DBAs, or you know, they've, they've got uh, experience in data management, but not in big data, and they're you know, wondering how they're going to you know, transition in their careers to really take advantage of this. What, what advice would you have for them to kind of get, get moving down that road? I, I think just go ahead and do it. I've always been a fan of <laughs> just uh, just just doing it basically and then uh, you know there's Nike uh, is the big data company. <laughs> just do it. Yeah. <laughs> they, they did it. I, <laughs> hope they, I hope they won't sue me for, for, for <laughs> this. I think that was a good but the, 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 I mean the point is that you know as opposed to 2008, 2009 there are the tools are much much more f finished. Great. The, everything mm -hmm. is much more easier. Completely great. You've got you've got Amazon, you've got Hadoop infrastructure in Amazon. Yes. You've got you can get started. Hadoop is enterprise ready. It's about exactly, time. To, yeah. Exactly. Mm -hmm. You can get started in in more than one way mm -hmm. and you can just start doing it right now just just learn the concepts learn the how, how to think like a, you know like a big data uh, practitioner or scientist and and, and mm -hmm. the community is pretty good the community embraces you you know the yes. 2000 people here are a testament to the fact that if you are willing to your point chef if you have an idea and you want to implement it and you want to reach out and figure out if you have a question because I agree with you completely it is a much stronger and exactly. readier ecosystem Mm -hmm. If you have a question, reach out to the community. There's, I mean, there's not enough people now mm -hmm. with expertise and experience exactly. and open to share it. Yeah, and we're bringing them on the cube. And we're bringing them on the cube. Yeah, yeah no, absolutely. I absolutely agree. I mean, I've you know been covering as a reporter before joining Wikibon as right. an analyst, covering uh, you know more traditional business intelligence and data okay. warehousing. And as I've kind of as we've all started to learn about big data, what I've really been struck by is exactly what you're talking about: the community, uh, just the ability, the willingness to share data. Mm -hmm. I mean, Abby, you've been. You know, coming on the cube a lot, you've helped helped me kind of uh, understand the market. So yeah, I agree. It's a, it's a great community of people. Um, you know, there's a little bit of that co-opetition on the right. vendor yeah. landscape, but that's good. You know, competition is, is good. good. It's a perfectly yeah. healthy phenomenon. Exactly. Yeah, Phenomies is, is is a really good thing to have. Absolutely. <laughs> All right. Well, thanks so much. We really appreciate you coming on the cube. Thank you so much. Thanks uh, for having me. We'll be right back in just a few minutes with our next guest.